Today, we will unveil the Chinese trick to saving money. Now I've learned a lot of these money-saving tactics from my mother, who is your average good with money Chinese person, and I'm delighted to share them with you. Before we dive into today's topic, I want to remind you to hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. It really helps my channel grow, and I appreciate your support. Stunning fact. Sit back and get ready. Because the most stunning fact about the Chinese is that in China, the gross savings rate as of December 2021 was 45.9%. That means on every $100 they bring in, they're saving roughly $46. Now contrast that with the United States where we have a heavy focus on consumption. Our savings rate is typically between 3 and 7%, according to the data. That's almost a factor of 9 to 13 times. Isn't that mind-blowing? Reasons for the disparity. So why are the Chinese so good at saving money? Let's explore the reasons behind this big disparity. Cultural influences. First, it is unquestionably cultural. Americans are continually bombarded with bargains, discounts, financing alternatives, and the temptation to keep up with their neighbors. 80% off clothing. Come in. I'll give you a free quote. It's as if we're constantly urged to spend. A lot of this originated after World War II, when it was deemed patriotic to consume and spur the economy after the Great Depression. However, conserving money is highly valued in China due to its cultural significance and the country's demographics. You'll also find a strong aversion to financing things. Chinese people often prefer to buy things outright with cash instead of taking on debt. The meaning of money. It's important to understand the why behind the Chinese mindset towards saving money. The first reason is the meaning of money and what it represents to them. From a young age, Chinese children are taught that saving money is honorable. They often receive money in red envelopes for New Year's and birthdays, referred to as lucky money, and are encouraged by their parents to save it. How does the cultural significance of money differ in your upbringing or cultural background compared to the Chinese perspective? Demographics and the one-child policy. The next reason ties into demographics and China's one-child policy, which was implemented in the late 1970s and early 1980s to stem overpopulation. Each family could have only one child, and if they had more, they would face fines and their second child wouldn't be eligible for healthcare or education services. This policy created a sharp decline in newborns, as well as sex-selective abortions, as having a boy was often more important than having a girl due to inheritance and family name traditions. At its worst, the ratio was 122 males for every 100 females born. With more men than women, there was a supply and demand issue, and men had to be viewed as successful, often equated with having a lot of money, to stand out. Additionally, since most families only had one child, parents didn't have to spend as much money on multiple kids allowing them to save more. Lack of retirement accounts. Another reason for saving in China is the lack of retirement accounts like 401ks or IRAs. While they have a pension system, many Chinese people are wary that it will still be around when they retire. So they save for the costs of healthcare, education, and their own pensions. The Chinese secret revealed. So what is the actual Chinese secret to saving money? It's not anything crazy. It's simply having every dollar accounted for. In my case, my mom would always know where her money was going at all times. The secret is a special budgeting system called zero-based budgeting. The zero-based budgeting system is a method in which you budget where you spend every last cent of your monthly income, so that your amount left at the end of every month equals zero. That means your income minus your expenses, including savings, investments, debt payments, and other savings goals, equals zero at the end of the month. Let's say you make $5,000 a month. A zero-based budget might look like this. Rent, $800. Groceries. $600. Utilities. $250. Car payment. $550. Emergency fund. $200. IRA contribution. $500. A student loan payment. $300. New car fund. $200. Other savings. $600. As you can see, by the time you allocate all your expenses and savings goals, you're left with $0 at the bottom. Have you ever tried zero based budgeting? What challenges or benefits have you experienced with this method? Before we wrap up, let me share the four main factors that the Chinese prioritize to help them save a lot of money. 1. Avoiding luxury and status symbols. The first factor is that they avoid expensive items or products that serve as status symbols. Most Chinese individuals prefer to remain humble and fly under the radar, therefore they avoid these types of purchases. 2. Living off a small percentage of income. Secondly, when the Chinese earn money, they like to live off a very small percentage of their income. My mom grew up with very little money in Singapore during her younger days, having to attend missionary school as they give out free rice. When she started earning an income, even if she earned $10, she tried to live off just $1. Of course, that's not always realistic, but the principle of trying to save as much as possible and live off very little stuck with her and me. 
However, it's important to acknowledge that this mindset can create a scarcity mindset about money, and as you earn more, you'll want to shift to an abundance mindset. 3. Prioritizing needs over wants The third factor is focusing on needs versus wants. If you need to spend money on something, especially related to your health or well-being, do it. For example, investing in an ergonomic chair for your desk is a reasonable need. But when it comes to wants, like a designer bag, make sure you'll get really good value out of it by using it for a long time to amortize the cost. 4. Eating at home Finally, if you're trying to save money quickly, the Chinese would advise you to stay at home and eat at home as much as possible. We all know that eating out is more expensive than cooking at home, and in my household growing up, we would only go out to eat for special occasions. I hope these tips have inspired you to save more. Besides learning how to save money like the Chinese, you may also wish to check out my other video on how to build wealth with zero dollars, the easy way, in the link above and in the description box down below. Do you save money like the Chinese? Comment below. If you enjoyed this video, do like and share this video so that more people will learn about how the Chinese save money. Check out this playlist of my top 10 videos for creating wealth and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.